This video is sponsored by Inside 3D. Stick around to the end of the video to learn more on how to model and render your own custom Transformers models at the end of this video. Welcome back Autobots and Decepticons, so what if I survived? Rebirth of the beloved miniseries on Trans series that dives into a fictional story on what would happen to a certain character if they would survive longer in the live action movies. And thanks to your guys' vote, today's will cover the Autobot medic Ratchet. So without further ado, let's jump right in. During the first Transformers movie, Ratchet came down to the first wave of Autobots. Once he landed, he scanned a customized Hummer H2 rescue vehicle and made his way to meet up with the other Autobots. Later he was introduced to be the medical officer of the Autobots, and would mark that his sensors indicate that Sam's pheromone level suggests he wanted to mate with Michaela. Now throughout the film, Ratchet joined up with his Autobot comrades to find Sam's grandfather's glasses that had the location of the Allspark imprinted on them. This search would eventually lead them face to face of Sector 7, where they would disarm them of their weapons. And oddly enough, and I think I'm the first one to spot this, but Ratchet has two blasters. If you look at this shot, you see him have a blaster in his right arm. But then in this shot, he has one in his left. But to fully seal the deal, we see him dual wield them when he's creating a barricade to stop Sector 7. And I slowed this down frame by frame, and indeed he has two blasters. It's like I always say, every time I watch these films, I see something new. But now moving back onto the What If I Survived, Ratchet would eventually make his way to Mission City with the other Autobots. He would assist Jazz and Ironhide in taking down Brawl, and if Ironhide's assistants escort Sam to a nearby building while fighting off Starscream. But once they escorted Sam, Ironhide and Ratchet would go to the body of Jazz, where they would try to reactivate him to no avail. And once the dust settled and the battle was one, Ratchet and Ironhide would regroup with Prime and B, with Ironhide holding Jazz's body, saying that they couldn't save him. And with that, the first movie came to a close. Now two years later, the second movie, Transformers Run to the Fallen, takes place, and Ratchet took more of a backseat role. He'd be first seen following Ironhide out of a C-17 and into the new Nest HQ in Diego Garcia, where he would hang out with the other Autobots while Prime lectured on the events that went down in Shanghai. Later after getting Optimus' distress call, Ratchet along with the other Autobots raced her way to get to his location, but they came right as Optimus was killed. Ratchet assist the Autobots in fighting off the Decepticons in a short skirmish, or he would tell Bumblebee to get Sam out of there. Seeing that the Decepticons were retreating, the Autobots exited their skirmish and made their way to an American military airbase with some Nest personnel. At the airbase, Nest returned off Optimus' body, only to be surrounded by United States military forces who had grown fearful of the Autobots' presence, attracting more Decepticons' Earth following Prime's death. Director Theodore Galloway, who was behind Nest's shutdown, believed that humanity was significantly advanced enough to battle off the Decepticons. Also announced that they would buy some time by negotiating with the Decepticons. Ratchet made no effort to conceal his low opinion of Galloway, believing him as a terribly misinformed fool. Ratchet himself suggested that the Autobots should leave Earth, but Ironhide noted that that's not what Optimus would have wanted. Reductantly, the Autobots stood down and were sent to be quarantined at Diego Garcia until further notice. Later, once Ness got word that Sam was in Egypt with the Matrix of Leadership, an artifact that could be used to resurrect Optimus, they changed the route to Egypt, where they would participate in the Battle of Operation Firestorm. Now, during this battle, Ratchet would help Ness take down many Decepticon soldiers, and once Optimus as Prime was resurrected, Ratchet would instruct his student Jolt to electrify Optimus and Jetfire's bodies, where he would perform a transplant of Jetfire's weapon systems and afterburners, combining the two robots into one, granting Optimus Prime the power of flight so he would be able to destroy the Star Harvester and kill the Fallen. Now three years later, after Transformers Runs of the Fallen, Transformers Dark of the Moon takes place. Ratchet would accompany Optimus to Ukraine to investigate a piece of ancient Autobot technology discovered there. But when Shockwave and his driller attacked, he left the fighting to his leader. After the battle, it was revealed that the artifact Shockwave tried to steal was an engine part from a long-lost Autobot ship, the Ark. Ratchet watches Optimus explain to National Intelligence Director Charlotte Meering the importance of this discovery, and Ratchet again joined Optimus, to the moon this time aboard the Xantium, to reach the Ark on the moon. Upon expiration of the wrecked ship's crash vault, the two discovered Sentinel Prime in deep stasis. Ratchet noted that Sentinel's levels were faint, and that he had five pillars in his possession. Later when Sentinel was revived, Ratchet reassured him that there was nothing to fear. Following this, Sentinel would eventually betray the Autobots by killing the Autobot weapon specialist Ironhide, and sending Megatron's army to Earth. The United Nations were forced to exile the Autobots on Sentinel's demands. Ratchet joined the Autobots in leaving Earth aboard the Xantium, and was presumed to be killed as the ship was exploded by Starscream. But not as all as it seems. The group actually hid in a piece of the ship that detached during liftoff, and later Ratchet and the Autobots would take back Chicago in an intense battle, where he and Bumblebee would destroy the control pillar, letting Cybertron implode on itself, eliminating Sentinel Prime's plan on rebuilding Cybertron. And after Megatron and Sentinel Prime were executed, Ratchet grouped up with the rest of the remaining Autobots, where he would commend Bumblebee for his bravery in battle. And just like that, 
that, Dark of the Moon comes to a close. Now, five years later, after Transformers Dark of the Moon, Transformers Age of Extinction takes place. Now, within these five years, much has changed for the Autobots. The Autobot Human Alliance Nest was disbanded and had a warning from Optimus, Ratchet and the other Autobots went into hiding as humans began hunting them down. This group was Cemetery Wind, established after the Battle of Chicago. Cemetery Wind was, in theory, supposed to hunt down the remaining Decepticons on Earth. However, unknown to higher-ups in the government, they actually hunted down both Autobot and Decepticon indiscriminately, along with secretly working with the unaffiliated bounty hunter Lockdown, who had his own agenda for hunting down Optimus Prime. And since Cemetery Wind's members were primarily made up of those who seemingly lost friends and family due to the Transformers' attacks, it certainly did not help. Now, Ratchet, following his leader's orders, went into hiding. He would end up hiding in an abandoned ferry in one of its smokestacks. But unfortunately, Cemetery Wind tracked him down and swiftly blew him out of his hiding spot. Ratchet would try to run off, but the Cemetery Wind forces eventually overpowered him by shooting most of his right leg off. This forced Ratchet to surrender, where he pleaded and protested that he was a medic and an Autobot friend. When asked why he ran, he revealed Optimus his warning message, and that all Autobots were in danger, unaware he was speaking to the very humans who were hunting them down. Savoy revealed that he lost his sister in the Chicago invasion and that Ratch would get no sympathy from him. Lockdown, who'd been helping to hunt down Autobots, fired on Ratchet from the water, and the humans resumed their attack. Ratchet returned fire, expressing confusion over their actions. He begged for them to stop as he was overwhelmed by their superior firepower. His gun was destroyed and he was seriously damaged by the attack. Cemetery Wind finally held their fire as Lockdown approached a damaged Autobot. Ratchet was confused to see Lockdown, who expressed frustration on many Autobot Decepticon conflicts he had encountered. Lockdown offered to spare his life if he revealed the location of Optimus Prime. Ratchet bravely refused to tell where Optimus was and could only weakly resist as Lockdown ripped out a spark from his chest, killing him. And sadly after that, that was the last of Ratchet we would see in the Bayverse ever again, besides seeing his head one last time being melted down into Transformium to become a KSI drone. But now this begs the question, what would happen if Ratchet survived being hunted down by Cemetery Wind? And the storyline is not going to be a continuation of my old What If I Survived Ironhide video, since I wanted to do something new. So with that out of the way, let's roll back the clock to where Ratchet is on the run. Instead of him getting his leg blown off while running, he would grab the car that was trying to cut him off and use it as a shield to block the incoming bullets. The car would also block the missile that shot off Ratchet's leg, but due to the force of the impact, it let Ratchet to fly backwards, but at the same time he was able to transform and speed his way out of there. But Ratchet was not scot-free yet. He might have delayed lockdown in the CW vehicles, but not the three helicopters that were after him. Ratchet knowing that they had humans operating them, he needed to figure out a way to deactivate them without killing the pilots. So he transformed and got out his laser beam, and he aimed it at the cockpits of the helicopters. This caused the visions of the pilots to be obstructed, and to pull away so they wouldn't be able to crash into anything. But Ratchet's escape was not over yet. The CW CW cars were rolling up to his location, so he got both his blasters out and he shot for the tires, immobilizing the vehicles, but his job wasn't over yet. Lockdown would come in behind the CW vehicles, where he would transform and jump over them, charging at Ratchet. Ratchet thinking quickly, he shot Lockdown, stunning him for a bit. He would then grab a nearby propane tank and launch it at Lockdown, where he would shoot it midair, causing a massive explosion that sent Lockdown flying back into the cemetery wind cars. Ratchet seeing that this was his opportunity, he seized it and he booked it out of there. He sent out a distress message to see if any other Autobots were still out there, and to his surprise he got a message back from Bumblebee, stating that he, Hound, Crosshairs, and Drift were taking refuge in Monument Valley. Now fun fact, of the time of Ratchet's escape, he's in River Road, Michigan, and he has to make his way all the way to Monument Valley in Arizona, which is according to Google Maps, a 28 hour drive. Now on this drive, Ratchet would alter his color scheme from white and green to white and red, to look more like a traditional ambulance, and as a throwback to his G1 color scheme. Now once he would reach Monument Valley, Ratchet would talk of his Autobot comrades about what happened to him, and in turn their stories on what happened to them. Hound and Crosshairs would question why they're still fighting to protect humanity and say that they should leave the planet. But Ratchet would intervene saying that leaving the planet would not be what Optimus would want. While in Monument Valley, Ratchet would attend to Bumblebee's vocal processors and would finally fix them, letting Bumblebee speak once more. Later when Optimus would arrive, Ratchet would introduce himself to Cade and friends and would later watch the drone footage of Cemetery Wind killing Leadfoot and the scenes of Ratchet being replaced with Sideswipe and Dino and with the rest of his comrades, Ratchet would mourn for his fallen friends and recall how close he was to being killed. Later, Ratchet would participate in a KSI raid, where he would break brains out of his box and attend to his broken leg, while Optimus was talking to Joshua Joyce. Later when the Autobots confronted Galvatron and Stinger, Ratchet would stay behind in all the fighting to try to save the human casualties that were caught in the crossfire, but the majority he came across perished in the skirmish. But he did save a few by helping them out of their cars, for example turning over cars that were not right side up, and for cars that were crushed inwards, he would use a saw blade to cut them open so the humans could get out. After all human casualties were accounted for, Ratchet would make his way over to Optimus while the other Autobots were fighting 
firing off Stinger. He would see that Optimus was captured and would attempt to use his laser beam to get his leader free. But Lockdown seeing this would make short work of Ratchet by shooting him in the shoulder, and due to the impact it caused Ratchet to be immobilized and unable to save Prime. Later in the film, Ratchet would participate in getting Tessa and Optimus off a Lockdown ship. And later when Optimus is down in dumps about protecting humanity, Ratchet reminded Prime about the speech that he told him a decade earlier, on how humanity was much like their own race. And his pep talk along with Cade's speech, remotivates Prime to still protect humanity. Now later, Ratchet would help Hound and Bumblebee fight off the KSI drones, and attend to any injuries taken. Now during this battle, Ratchet would slice and blast through any drones that came in his way, using both of his blasters to his advantage. And when Hound was tackled by two heads, he would shoot out one of its heads, while Hound blew out the other of his cigar. And for the sake of the story, Ratchet would 3v1 some KSI Traxes, along with single-handedly taking out a KSI boss by throwing a saw blade at its head. But as a second wave of drones came in, the three Autobots were overpowered by them, until Optimus and his group of Autobots charged in with the Dinobots, turning the tide of battle for the Autobots' favor. Now later in the film, Ratchet would help escort Kate and friends safely through the city, blocking all objects in their path. And for the final battle, Ratchet would accompany B and Kate in taking down Lockdown. But when trying to pull out the sword from Optimus's chest, Ratchet got shot by Lockdown's gun, stunning him. Bumblebee would then tackle Lockdown and attempt to give Ratchet time to pull it out, which Ratchet would do. In the meantime, Lockdown got the upper hand on B and was about to extract the spark. But thanks to Ratchet pulling out the sword, it led to Optimus swiftly decapitating Lockdown before he could plunge a spark extractor into Bumblebee. Bumblebee would thank his comrades and Optimus would detonate Lockdown's grenade as B and Ratchet left the scene. And besides being present at Optimus' speech, that would be the last of what Ratchet would do in Transformers Age of Extinction. Now five years later after Transformers Age of Extinction, Transformers The Last Night takes place. Now during the last night, Ratchet would hang around in a junkyard. He would help Cade create Bumblebee's splitting apart ability and participate in the creation of the mini Dinobots, but disaster would eventually strike. Once word came out that the Decepticons were heading to the junkyard, Ratchet volunteered to stay behind to help Trench and Hound, along with protecting the mini Dinobots. Now as the Decepticons closed in, the three Autobots waited at their fixed locations. Once Hound gave the order, the three busted out of their hiding places to attack. Hound went for Megatron, while Trench went for Barricaded Onslaught. Unfortunately for Ratchet, he was at a 3v1. He was going up against Nitro Zeus, Mohawk, and Dreadbot. And if he wanted to survive, he would need to be quick on his feet. As Mohawk charged at Ratchet, Ratchet drew out a saw blade and decapitated him. He would use his head as a football, throwing it right at Dreadbot, nailing him in the head and stunning him. But as Nitro charged at him, Ratchet knew he wouldn't be able to outgun him. So instead he got out his laser, and flashed it into Nitro's eye. It caused Nitro to stumble onto the gas station, but this victory wouldn't last long, as he saw Hound fly back due to a shot from Megatron's fusion cannon. He rushed over to help his friend and to give him medical attention. But as Hound said to Ratchet that there was no use and that it was game over, Ratchet came to the grim conclusion that they were gonna die. As he looked to his left, he heard the blood-curdling screams as Trench was ripped apart into two. As Megatron and his crew surrounded Ratchet and Hound, Hound told Ratchet to escape, but Ratchet denied, stating that he would not leave him to die alone. As Megatron came up to the two Autobots, he grabbed Ratchet by the throat and stated that if they didn't tell him where the location of the talisman was, the two would die. Hound lifted up his pistol aiming it at Megatron, saying not a chance, but before he could shoot, Megatron charged up his fusion cannon, and Ratchet looked away as his friend was shot through the gut, killing him instantly. Ratchet tried to resist, but there was nothing he could do against Megatron's grip. Megatron repeated his question once again. Ratchet bravely responded never to this and accepted his fate as Megatron crushed Ratchet's neck until nothing was left. And just like that, that completes Ratchet's What If I Survived. I hope you guys enjoyed this video since it took a lot of time to make, but overall it was a fun story to do, so expect more What If I Survives in the future. But before I go, I want to tell you guys about Inside 3D. Now, Inside 3D lets you model and animate your own Transformers with movie quality CGI lighting, along with having many modeling, texturing, and lighting tutorials on their Patreon to help you out every step of the way, along with a live chat if you need further assistance. Inside 3D has several characters to choose from, and more are being created. So if any of this interests you, go to the link in the description to check them out. And as always, if you enjoyed this What If I Survived, please give a like rating because it helped the channel a lot. And as always, it's been Trans Series, reminding you guys to never stop theorizing. Thank you.